If the coronavirus and the economic fallout that followed afterwards was not rough enough for this country, so much has happened in the last few months that we will never, ever forget 2020. Names and faces that will be with us for the rest of our lives. Of course, what we're talking about here were what happened to several black men and a black woman as they were accosted by police and everything that happened after that, the anger that sent people out into the streets in, in ways that we have not seen since the early 90s and the 60s. Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and Rayshard Brooks, these are the names that have galvanized millions and brought the issue of race back to the forefront of the American consciousness. Strong turnout from the black vote will be key if Biden is to win the presidency, but as Steve Osinsami explains, despite many crediting black voters with saving his campaign, he has not consolidated that key block. If racism is America's original sin, then these events that are framing November's election are in no way repentful. I'm out here to tell the shores. There's a black male running down the street. So tell where, where, where at so tell the shores? I don't know what street we're on. Stop right there, is it? Stop. The shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery in South Georgia was a reminder to many that being black or brown in America can get you killed for that reason alone. There were other people seen visiting the same construction site who no one felt was suspicious and are not dead. But it was the agonizing death of George Floyd that was one too many, where to many Americans, the white police officer seen killing him appeared to enjoy the moment. Saying her name, Brianna Taylor in Kentucky, Elijah McLean in Colorado, Say his name! Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta. For the first time since the civil rights movement of the 1960s, Americans of every color filled the streets, demanding racial justice from the people they put into office. Their president, who once defended white supremacists in Virginia, told them that the words Black Lives Matter, painted in front of his former New York residence, is a symbol of hate. They want to silence us, but we will not be silenced. So on the issue of race, it should be easy points for former Vice President Joe Biden, who worked alongside the nation's first black president and has selected a black woman as his running mate. But this is Joe Biden. Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community. And in this interview with a New York City radio station, he reached a little far, questioning the blackness of any black American who wouldn't vote for him. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Even the senator who he has chosen to run with gave him no end of grief for opposing school integration efforts in the 1970s. Do you agree today? that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then. No. Do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. But among older black Americans who are arguably the most pragmatic in the Democratic Party and who rescued his campaign by giving him an overwhelming victory in the South Carolina primary, he's still their champion. Among younger black voters, not as much. So the question is, am I excited for Joe Biden? Um, the answer would be no. However, I am eager to get Trump out of office. Um, and right now, Biden is pretty much the only realistic way we have of doing that. So I will be voting for him. Am I excited for Joe Biden being president? Answer is no. Biden will get my vote by default. I am not happy, nor am I excited to vote for Joe Biden. However, I am willing to settle for Joe Biden over the current administration. It's time for us to hold our elected officials accountable. Mary Pat Hector graduated from a historically black college, and when we talked with her, was on her way to Kentucky to protest the police shooting death of Breonna Taylor. What's your advice for Joe Biden, the candidate, from here on out? I think my advice for Joe Biden is to continue to speak to those at the margins. I believe that they're going to show up to the polls, that they're going to vote without a shadow of a doubt. I believe that they are going to do what's right. We cannot afford to live in a country where we are afraid to live. Latasha Brown is one of many who has reminded Biden how his bread is buttered, encouraging him in this newspaper editorial to pick a black VP. She says black voters need to look at this as an election about reducing harm. 
There is a danger in having a president that is openly racist. This is not a normal election. We don't need to treat it like it is a normal election. In Atlanta, George Cheedy has learned firsthand the anger in the streets. He went down to that burned down restaurant where Rayshard Brooks was killed to hear what young people were thinking. I got smacked around a little bit. He says while older black voters would, quote, choose a fire hydrant over President Trump, he believes younger voters are demanding more. Joe Biden needs to remind people that he has a long relationship with the black community, like that the Democratic Party has a long relationship with the black community, that the Democratic Party does not win without black voters. And so the Democratic Party owes you. Look at what Donald Trump says every third day for the last 1,000 days. Donald Trump was talking about, like, suburban housewives trying to keep poor, and you can hear the air quotes around it, poor people out of your neighborhoods, like low income. It's not a dog whistle. It's a foghorn. This is certainly not 2008, where hope had black that. Americans voting for something. This time, the vote on the left is more inspired by what it's against. Like, whatever else is going on, Joe Biden's got to be pretty boring. Like, and we want that. We're looking for a little boring. We've all been waiting for the perfect candidate to come in on a horse and save us all. I don't think that we're that delusional anymore. For ABC News Live, I'm Steve Osinsami in Atlanta. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.